be a living nightmare or an experience of a lifetime. 17 celebrity recruits arrived in a baptism by fire. Boom! I don't know what we're going to face now. Before a terrifying submersion. I'm so scared. Brought Melissa's fears to the surface. I'm very much stronger you are. than what I give myself credit for. Tonight. Get in tight. Remain calm. Do not panic. The toughest selection course ever. I can't do it. You can do it and you will do it because there is no way out. Out, out, out. Claims not one, but three victims. Look at me, look at me. Your strength will fucking prevail. And <gasps> in a death-defying <gasps> test of nerves, <sighs> Wayne Carey. Your head is big enough. Start fucking using it. Is exposed. I slept with a teammate's wife. <sighs> a teammate. It's haunted me for, for over 20 years. You did have this attitude. I'm the world's greatest footballer. I do what the fuck I want. In a remote compound, 17 celebrity recruits have survived their first 24 hours oh. of the brutal SAS selection course. How'd you sleep? Shit out. Oh, I was up all night. All night. It was awful. OK, guys, breakfast. You're going to have to eat fast. With another exhausting day ahead, the recruits must fuel up on the limited camp rations. I'll have a omelette with a lot, please. Duty recruit number one, Ebony, must serve the other recruits before herself. Stop. What are we having for breakfast? Porridge and egg. I'm not eating porridge. I'll have yours. I do like the finer things in life. You know, I love going to nice restaurants. Is it literally just porridge? Porridge and egg. Porridge and egg. None of us are doing this course because we heard the food was great. Like, it's all around got shit reviews. But I am not eating porridge. Are you never going to eat porridge? I mean, I it's might. It's please. I think it's better than my porridge at home when I do it. Like, it's pretty good. Mm, it's all flavour. It's just, like, not ideal. Ugh. I hate porridge. You just saw lap. Yeah, I think my hips and lower back are a little bit sore. Yeah. Mealtimes are an opportunity for the recruits to get to know each other better. So retired NRL star, number eight, Darius Boyd, fields a few questions. What's your Nash, man? What's your background? Oh, I don't know. I, Aussie, I think. Yeah? I never, met my, I never met my father, so I don't really... My name's Greek, but I think my mum just sent me on a TV show or something. <laughs> I'm pretty quiet, shy, closed off. Like to be more alone, I guess. I don't like to be centre of attention, that's for sure. I reckon you're just Anglo. Sorry to be boring. Yeah. So I'm just waiting for Orpheus. Where's Orpheus, man? Can you tell Orpheus to hurry up? Because I've got to eat as well. Come on, come on. <laughs> Can you feel it? Yeah. Keep moving it. Number 17, pro boxer Michael Zarafa has started the day with severe shoulder pain. Oh. I'm number one in Australian middleweight boxing, ranked number seven in the world. And I knocked out my childhood hero, Anthony Mundine. Um, I became the man on top in Australian boxing and he called me out and we, the fight ended up happening and I ended up knocking him out in the first round. So dreams do come true, I guess. <laughs> Any massages? Oh, fuck, where it goes all over. Had a lot of injuries, breaks. You know, that's that's boxing. And it hurts, I push harder. Orpheus needs to move a bit fucking faster. He just dawdles, yeah. he just fucking dawdles everywhere. He's on Fiji time, like oh. me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys, we gotta be at the parade at 7.20. 
with a strict schedule to adhere to. Number nine, former home and away heartthrob, Orpheus Pledger, is in no hurry to start the day. I did almost four years playing Mason Morgan on Home and Away. I really like to go with the flow. I like to be in the moment. So if I'm told to do something, it sometimes takes a while for me to do it. Then in that waiting time, I find out all there is to know from an outsider's perspective from <laughs> about what I want to do. Orpheus, mate, move faster because we need to go. I'm doing this because it's a challenge, it's a test. It would be a great accomplishment for me to complete something. Get in, she wagons, let's go! All right, we got to start moving up there. I'm stressing about it. It's not easy. Heading out for yet another relentless day, the recruits will face a harrowing test of self-control. In the Special Forces, a key trait that you need to be able to harness is panic. When the shit hits the fan, panic will not only kill you, it will kill everyone around you. You must be able to control panic, harness it, and make it work for you. Get out! The recruits have been brought to an abandoned outpost. Hurry up! Fucking hell! Nine! Move it! Where retired US Navy SEAL DS Clint will lead them in a panic inducing mission. As a Navy SEAL, you are trained as experts operating in any environment. Make sure you can see the DS. One of the things that set me apart from other SEALs is I operated in more of a clandestine environment, operating alone in a manner that no one will ever know about or hear about. All right. Today, your mission will solely rely on you going undetected, without panicking. And the SEAL teams and operator may be tasked with entering an unoccupied target. Do whatever is needed, and then get the hell out of there before the target is occupied. It's life or death, and that's it. Remember the information, retention of information always. I am watching. Replicating an enemy infiltration, the recruits must silently navigate a series of deadly walkways 15 terrifying metres above the ground, retrieve a mission essential bag and get out quickly. All with Dia Stoddy and Anne watching on. 12, go! Lightning! Unaware of the mission ahead, Number 12, TV personality Anna Heinrich is first to face the fearful task. I am here doing SAS because I just want more belief in myself. I go into things thinking that I can't do it. And I think that having a negative train of thought has held me back in life in many ways. Okay, look at that window. You're gonna be going through it. Yes, sir. And then you're gonna be staying at that height. You cannot use the floor. Once you're inside, you will find a backpack, mm -hmm. and then you will make your way to an extraction window where I will be. Yes, Time is of the essence, right? Yes, sir. You don't know when the bad guys will be back to the target. Yes, sir. And you have to be quiet as you move. You understand? Yes, sir. Face the wall. Undetected is a task simulating CMOE, which is clandestine methods of entry. All right, that's your ladder. Start your climb. It's essential for the world of special operations. I was tasked once with deploying a piece of technology that would allow us to kill an Al-Qaeda leader. He was in an area that you weren't supposed to be able to get in there. And you're sure as hell not supposed to get out if you did. And I was surrounded by a whole bunch of people that didn't like me. In, out, let's do it. To complete a mission like that, you have to get it done right the first time so that you can stay alive. Keep the noise down, number 12. I'd like to think I'm not afraid of heights, but I feel like when you get up to a certain point, 
everybody is afraid of heights. But now that I'm a mum, I want to show my little girl, Elle, that anything is possible if you have self-belief. Fucking good luck getting over there. Number 12 must now make the dangerous transition from pipe to pipe. Don't panic. Just focus on the next phase. Approaching the vitally important mission bag. Get that to the exit point. Anna must now stretch out to unhook it, risking loss of balance and plummeting to the ground. <laughs> Fucking hell! Well, guess what? You've just woken up in the whole neighborhood. Keep the fucking noise down. We've already alerted everyone that you're here, so hurry up. <coughs> fucking hell. Climb back up that rope and get back on that platform. Yes, you sir. fucking panic. When you got the case, you might as well woke up the whole fucking village. And as soon as that happened, you went to rat shit. Start switching on the stuff. Go! Next to attempt the anxiety-inducing task is number 11, model Simone Holtznagel. I know what I look like, and I know that I do get underestimated. I have to get over to the ladder. Sorry, I'm so confused. Shh. Get noise down. But I'm pretty good in an emergency situation. What are you doing? I'm not sure. I'm... Fucking get on it. I'm not scared of heights, so... I don't think that that would be like a panicky situation for me whatsoever. This bit's easy for you, number 11. Just pretend you're on a catwalk. There we go. Oh, my God. Assess the ground. Make your next move. Oh, my God, I'm going to fall. I, I can't. I don't want to hear I can't. Oh, my God. Do not slip, because you will fall far. Oh, Where are you going I next? I can't. I can't pull myself up there. Oh, my God. up here, isn't it? Yeah. Hey? Get a grip of your emotions. Ask yourself if you want to be here. Get it into your head. Because if you don't, don't waste our time. Don't waste your time. Yes, sir. As the recruits nervously await their turn. 16, go! Sprint! AFL commentator Wayne Carey is called to task. During my football career, I played 272 games and was two-time premiership captain. The most special things to me is playing in two winning grand finals. You know, to see the joy on people's faces that have followed the club for so long, that's the pinnacle of a sporting life for me. All the way into the DS. I've made some really big mistakes in my personal life. 
but I think I'm living proof that you can make mistakes and get through the other end. You just have to, it, 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 it takes work. All right, you're gonna infill through that window. Once you're inside, you're gonna stay high angle of attack. You're not allowed to go to the floor, understood? Yes, you're gonna maintain high ground. After you grab the backpack, you're gonna make your way out. Do you understand? Yes, tough. You sure? Yes, tough. All right. So I'm not turn around, face the wall. I want to show that I'm I'm hardworking and um, I'm a good listener. I can drift off and 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 not listen, but I would hope that I can follow instructions. Look where you need to go. Doing? Despite DS Clint's clear instructions, you're not allowed to go to the floor. Understood? Yes, stuff. Number 16, head straight in that direction. What's the mission brief? Go on, tell me why you're hanging there like a spare prick. Go on. Go up the ladder, have a look around, and then make, way, make your way down. That make you make your way down. Someone said make your way down. That's what I thought, Staff. Drop him down. I can tell you for a fact, a fact, that no one told you to get on the floor. Where are you gonna go from there? Drop. You're gonna fucking drop, was you? Nice and discreet. You think you can drop from there to here? No, nice and discreet. No, Staff. You're gonna snap your fucking ankle. No, I didn't look. You didn't look? Your fucking head is big enough. I'm sure there's a brain in there. Start fucking using it. Yes, stuff. That was shocking. Suffering from a bad shoulder injury, number 17 will need to overcome intense pain and hold his panic at bay. I ain't get scared. I've been all around the world and fought the best in the world. So that's why I'm here now, to prove that I'm not scared of any task. Whether it's in the ring or outside the ring. But barely halfway through, the shoulder pain hampers his progress. <sighs> Enemies on your back now, because they've just fucking hurt you. So I suggest you get a shift on. I've never been in a situation like the SAS course. And this is something I really want to test myself with because I've never been broken, ever. <laughs> but if anything's going to break me, this SAS course could. If you can't do it, just drop off. Coming up. Calm down, you're drowning each other. In a terrifying new task. Calm down. The recruits Calm fight down. for their lives. If you let that panic consume you, it will sure as hell get you killed. <laughs> and later. I've uh, been charged with assaulting police. I got accused of glassing my girlfriend. When did you decide to grow the fuck up? It's day two of the elite SAS selection course. And in the ultimate test of nerve, each recruit must navigate a series of high dangling walkways to retrieve a mission essential bag and escape without detection. Come on then, let's move. Keep the noise down as well. Having reached the halfway mark, pro boxer Michael is struggling as his shoulder pain worsens. Get a fucking move on, number 17. Every day I push my body to the limits. I've been doing that my whole life. You've got five seconds to move. When I get in the ring, I just flick that switch and then that lion heart 
you know, comes out to play. I've got people to prove wrong and I've got titles to win. It's kill or be killed. Strive for pain, strive for greatness. Pushing through intense pain. Go for it. Number 17 retrieves the bag, but must now make it out without making any further sound. Uh, give the fucking noise down. Uh. Uh. Despite retrieving the bag and making the exit, the excessive noise throughout the task I could hear you a fucking mile away. Means a fail for number 17. You know, there's times where I've given 200% and still failed. But it makes me stronger, it makes me human. As long as I take something from it and fail forward, for me, that's all you gotta do, you gotta fail forward. Come on, number six, think, think. <laughs> this task simulates what I did the last part of my career getting in to targets undetected so that there's no forensic trace back to myself <laughs> or to the United States government. <laughs> you can't take the wrong step. You're fucking disciplined. I know you are. You're a fucking boxer. Do not take the piss. Yes, Good job. It really is determining if someone's aware enough to look for the target. What the fuck are you doing? You're not using your fucking head! What the fuck is squeeze it? Agile enough to balance across beams. That was fucking embarrassing. And have the forethought to see a path and exit safely. Let's go. Fucking hell, it's the fastest one. Let's go, let's go, Ian. Outstanding. Turn around. All right, how you feel you did? I think I did well stuff. Yeah, I think you crushed it. So far, barely half the recruits have passed the task. Don't fuck this up, number nine, let's go. Now, number nine, actor Orpheus Pledger must control the urge to panic. When I'm on the edge and I'm facing fears, I tell myself that I can do this. Good. I just gotta psychologically G myself up to take that leap of faith confidently. <laughs> I'll definitely be channeling Arnold Schwarzenegger in Predator. Hmm. Good effort. My biggest fear is having fear. Because if I've got fear, then it means I'm not able to be in the moment. What you just done there is an amazing effort because your head's in the game. You take charge of this and keep it there because look, it's fucking amazing you've done now. Good effort. Go and join the others. Move. Make your stuff. Fun. Despite his casual start to the day, number nine has performed well and passed the task. You're in your element now. Yeah. <laughs> Go on. The final recruit is number three, singer and actor Melissa Couts. Faster than that, number three. Okay, if there was any time to reach in and grab that fucking strength that you obviously have, this is it, okay? Number three, look at me. Got this. I am a panicky person. I panic over the smallest things. So uh, my go-to will be to panic, and then the, the next step will be, can I do this? Oh. No, I'm not gonna start whining yet. You know better, get up the ladder. Come on, Mel, just get up there. Come on, she can do it. What if my mental strength gets me over the line? <laughs> Number three, stand up. See this ladder here? Yes, sir. That's where you've got to make it to. 
You've committed, you've done the first bit. You've taken the first layer off, and let's go. Lean out further than that. I can't stop. I'm trying. I'm sorry. It's fine, listen, calm down. I'm so sorry. Number three. Let's move now. <laughs> I'm sorry I let you down. Don't be sorry, you've committed. It's all you can do. Make your way back down yes. the ladder. I will see you at the bottom of the yes, ladder. Sir. Failure is inevitable. You failed up to now in your life, you're gonna fail to the day you die. That is a fact. Embrace it. Even if I don't succeed, I'm gonna learn something. <laughs> don't cry. When you realize that failure is everyday part of life and it's the biggest learning tool out there, you're not gonna succeed at everything, but there's not much that you won't commit to. Hold your head high, extremely high. From day one, from the very first hour, you were petrified. You faced every single fear and phobia that was put in front of you. You are one brave woman. That means so much to me, you have no idea. You are. I don't number three, honestly. <laughs> been an absolute hero. Thank you. All right, take your helmet with you. Let's go. Good Thank effort. You. Remember, use everything you've been taught. Yes, sir. I'll never One forget brave you. Woman. Thank you. Number three, Melissa, becomes the first recruit to voluntarily withdraw from the course. Come here to do what I needed to do and what I wanted to do. This was for no one else but for my own demons. I just want to say, well, look, I did it, you know? And I, I feel as though I've done that. I am so much more bloody stronger than I give myself credit for. And this is what I have to take on with my life. Next. Jesus Christ, this guy is a fucking train wreck. Wayne's dark past comes to light. To have this fuck you attitude, I'm the world's greatest footballer. I do what the fuck I want. Having withdrawn from the course, Melissa makes an emotional call home. Hi, baby. Hi, I'm out. I've done it. Well, I've done all that I could. How are you? Oh, I'm so proud of you. Oh, thank you, baby. I gave it everything that I had. <laughs> so, oh, baby, thank you so much. I. <laughs> Hi, baby. Mommy's coming. So I miss you so much. I'm so proud of you, Mom. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, guys. I can't wait to kiss your face. We love you, Mommy. Yeah. Bye, baby. Bye. Bye. The person that worked in here was trembling and was scared and didn't know whether I was going to last five minutes. One last time, you and me. And the person that is leaving from here is a stronger person and it's changed my life forever. He looked inside my soul and he saw that I, I had pain, but he also saw that I'm my own worst enemy and I can do it. All right. This is for you, Aunt. Oh, I will never forget what I've done here. And I know I've only done a day and a half, but for me, it was so big. I'm very grateful. Lucky piss on that seat. After a harrowing morning on the course. Who? Lucky piss on the seat again. <laughs> oh, God, mate. AFL great Barry Hall now has to deal with the toilet habits of fellow recruit Lockie. I'm just a terrible aimer. <laughs> I'm pretty good in basic conditions. Um, I don't mind pooing in a hole. Um, 
but, you know, bad habits on the toilet. I can't stand and I will speak up. <laughs> hey, are all the boys here? Hey? All the boys here? Yeah. Hey, when, when, you just go, when you have a piss, sorry girls, but can you not piss on the seat? Yeah. So I, if I need to do another one... I'm glad we separated them. <laughs> I don't want to be sitting on a piss stain seat. How often has a bloke heard that in their life? <laughs> <laughs> it's generally from their generally from their partner. Or if you do, just oh, wipe it up. Yeah. <laughs> never th I never thought I'd hear that from, from Big Bazza. <laughs> don't, don't piss on the seat. As the recruits establish some housekeeping rules, the DS gather to discuss their performance in the morning's task. The ones that stood out the most to me that did a great job, number 14, stood out. Yeah, number 14, figured out straight away. Um, number nine, today was getting into it. You know, it's like a bit of a knife's edge, is it, which way is it gonna go? Yeah. This morning, I was like looking at him thinking, fuck it, do I need to go and have a word with him? Because he was like... It did seem like oh, he was no, gaming like it. vacant. His focus is just anywhere. Yeah, not in the game, is it? Not in the game, not in the game. Moment. But I don't know what issues or outside distractions that he's got, but they're big. Mm. Definitely one to keep an eye on. Uh, and then the ones that didn't do so hot, number 16, that's deer in the headlights constantly. It was fucking embarrassing. Yeah. It's like, you look at him and you think to yourself, yeah, this guy can do the job. Zero brain power. Probably had two brain cells bouncing off each other. So disappointing. Let's get him in then. Yeah. Number 16. Is that number 16? Yeah. Named the greatest player in 150 years oh, of Australian okay. football. Time on my trouble. Here we go. Let's look at this. Jesus Christ, this guy is a fucking train wreck. Oh, number 16. Let's go. Good luck. Sit down. Today, it's the fucking dope on the rope. Ah, oh, it's just a brain fade. Brain fade? Have you got a brain up there? Yes, stuff. You reckon you have? Yes. What do you do for a living? AFL footy stuff. Ah, oh, that'll explain it. Been hit in the head too many times. Good footballer? Not too bad stuff. Someone that's named one of the greatest fucking players, you're really downplaying it, aren't you? I think it's, it's, yeah, it's open to conjecture whether you, whether you're great or not. When did you first make the papers from being a football legend to being, right, this guy's got some issues? Fucking trail of destruction you left behind there. Yeah, stuff, certainly up and down. I'm not proud of some of the things that I've done, but I've done a lot of work on myself over the last 10 years, and I take ownership of it. Oh, one of the biggest story staff was when I, when I uh, slept with a teammate's wife. A teammate? Yes, yeah, staff. It's haunted me for, for over 20 years. I was in self-destruction mode and, you know, I, I guess my life started to unravel. I left uh, the football club and went to America and... Talk to me about America. In America, I've uh, been um, charged with assaulting police. Um, I got accused of glassing my girlfriend. I went over to to throw wine on her in a restaurant, which clearly is wrong. Uh, the glass touched her lip. The headlines were that I glassed her. What are you fucking playing at? What went through your head? That's one of the biggest regrets of my life, stuff. Of course, throwing wine on, on a girlfriend is unacceptable. Completely unacceptable. 
Yes, the glass touched her lip, didn't break, didn't, I wasn't trying to glass her. Certainly didn't. So you're quite an aggressive person. No stuff. All my partners will say, I've, I've never been physically abusive, but have I been abusive mentally and also, I guess, intimidating? Absolutely. And you'd have this fuck you attitude, I'm the world's greatest footballer, I do what the fuck I want. No, staff, I, I think... Are it, you sure about that? Yeah, absolutely. Are you sure? I am staff. Why, why I behave that way, staff, is due to, I think, a, a number of reasons, not addressing things and actually being physically violent to someone. I, I saw that every day growing up. The way my dad was with my mum, horrific stuff. And, and that's why when people close to me said, that, that is unacceptable, I'd say, hang on, that's, what do you mean? I raised my voice, I stood up, you know? Um, I put my arm, I put my arm on her. I now know how warped my thinking was. You don't actually have to hit someone to be, to be abusive. When did you decide to grow the fuck up? Oh, the, the, the penny drop stuff. I spoke to the, the, the right people and since then, it, it, and that's not to say that I'm a perfect human now either, staff. I'm, I'm still a work in progress. Always that's a work in progress. No, in order to be old and wise, you have to have been young and dumb, right? So listen, it is what it is, but do you want to be known for who you were or who you are? Not for who I am now, staff. We can see on the course that you're keen, even for your age, you're in good shape. I need you to start engaging your fucking head. Okay? Yes, staff. It's gonna get harder, it's gonna get tougher. You use your fucking brawl and your fucking brain, and you should do okay on this course. Yes, staff. God! You got this. He seems massively humbled now, doesn't he? Yeah, he does, mate. He really is. You know, and that just goes to show you that he has moved yeah. on, which is great. <laughs> All good. All good. Eight, ten years ago, I embarked on this journey of seeking the help that, that, that I needed to invariably be where I am now. It's been a long road. But I think I'm, I'm a better person for it. Alright guys, cleaning duties. As duty recruit, it's number one Ebony's responsibility to ensure the camp is clean and tidy at all times. Nine and ten um, is, is dorm cleaning, so sweeping in here, keeping this tidy, where we're eating, um, keeping that tidy. Thirteen and fifteen fire duties and eleven and four um, toilets. <laughs> Do we have to do it right now? Oh my God, that's disgusting. I don't even like... I don't even want to talk about the toilet. Classic fucking stitch up. Simone, toilet time. I think it's probably just up to our own prerogative like when to do it, right? That's a nightmare. <laughs> Oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. Oh my God, it smells so bad. <sighs> Yuck. I, oh my gosh. Is there some sort of like facial shield you could wear? Do, do you wanna do that? I can do the toilets. Are you sure? Do, do you wanna clean that bit up? Um. I can do the toilets. Okay. Managing to avoid toilet duty Model Simone has other jobs to attend to. Um. Uh, yuck. I would like to think that I'd make a great soldier. Oh, yeah. But the toilet situation, it just isn't built for people like me. Oh! <laughs> Um, who's on? Are you floor duty with Orpheus? Yeah, yeah. 
as the recruits prepare for the afternoon ahead. Can you make sure that he's just not wasting his time in there? Fucking stepping doesn't need to be done. I just told him that we're done. Actor Orpheus Pledger is running to his own timetable. He's literally off with the fairies. Yeah, just make sure that the tables are clean. You don't need to sweep if there's no shit there. You know what I mean? If someone tries to make me do something that I need to do without telling me why, I find it intrusive, I find it annoying, that's all. Concerned by number nine's erratic behavior, and has reviewed his psych test, a process all recruits undergo prior to the course. A psychometric test is a way of putting the puzzle together, and that's why I get together with the doctor, because we live and breathe the course with them. I see stuff out on the ground, and I want to relate it to what's going on inside their head. Wanting to understand how his mind works, and and chief medic, Dr. Dan, call Orpheus in to find out more. Number nine, come in and sit down. Yes, stuff. Chief instructor's just come to see me to have a discussion about your mindset. You seem quite lost at the beginning. You were strong at today. And it's that mindset that I'm after. When you're on it, you're on it. But there's no in-between ground. It's either, do you know what, yeah, let's fucking do this, or nah, you're not getting that out of me. Would that, would that that's say that's, absolutely right. Yeah? Yeah. I think you've had to prove stuff to other people in your career acting, I want to be to prove you good and get this music record or whatever it may be. You don't need to do that anymore. You need to prove it to yourself. Turn that energy, inner energy, on yourself. To keep chipping off each task and each day. You will grow. Get stronger and stronger and stronger. You owe it to yourself, number nine. You know you can do it. Uh, I want to go home. What, you want to go? What? You want to go? go home. What now? Mm. You want to go home? Mm. Completing a course like this. If it's exactly what I'm required to learn, then I'm going to go for it. And if I don't want to learn it, then I'm not going to learn it. And if you, if you call that quitting, then that's quitting. Otherwise, it's me doing what I want for myself because I care about other people. You won't get this chance again if you walk out that door now. Number nine, we haven't even started. The choice is completely yours. I definitely, I definitely want to go. Okay, I've passed me your number. number nine. Orpheus is now the second recruit to voluntarily withdraw. I don't care if you're Australia's most loved celebrity. Do not come on my course if you are not there to give absolutely everything. Don't waste our time. Simone is already feeling panic creep in. I'm gonna piss my pants already. Oh. While number 17, pro boxer Michael, oh. fights a painful shoulder injury. Being in pain, like, it's just the most fun. It's down my arm, I feel my I know. Seven. All down here? Yeah, like, I can keep like, yeah. I know, like it's all through the inside, I know. Hurry up! Get your burgers on your back! Let's go! Go! Hurry up! Quick you can to the DS! Go! Stop fucking around! Spread it out, tall at the rear, short in the front. Take your burgers off and sit on them. Huddle. All right. So there is a saying in the SEAL community that is, get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And there are multiple ways to determine whether recruits or people who want to be SEALs are comfortable in the water. 
Today you will experience one of those many. It is called the beehive. The beehive combines claustrophobia, the fear of water, the fear of drowning, all in one shot. In a lost at sea scenario, the recruits will first be plunged deep into cold water. As the task's name suggests, they'll be forced to swarm together like bees, treading water while fighting off the fear of drowning. As a SEAL, you'll find yourself in plenty of situations where you think you're just gonna drown right then and there. But if you let that panic consume you, then it will sure as hell get you killed. All right, as I say go, you will enter the tank, okay? You will head to the center and you'll start treading water. Okay, you ready? Go. Go. But in a task designed for failure, where no recruit can tread water indefinitely, the DS are looking to see who will maintain composure and who will be first to panic. You could be the strongest swimmer and really struggle on, on the beehive. If one recruit panics and grabs one of the other recruits, you know, they, they could potentially pull them under. This is the beehive! Get it in tight! Fucking move! Come on, come on, come on! The space that they need to tread water is decreasing. Get in tight! Remain calm! Closer, closer, smaller, smaller. Calm down! In their eyes is sheer panic. Calm down! No, no, no! Get in tight! Come on, get in tight! Remain calm! One of you panics everyone! Panics! That overwhelming sense of panic, that state of not being in control of my emotions, something that I know has been a weakness of mine. Get in the center! Get in there, get in tight. Be comfortable with this comfort. That's right, guys. Ignore the noise, the distraction, the claustrophobia. Calm it the fuck down. After five terrifying minutes treading water, desperately trying to stay afloat, the recruits are rapidly tiring. Get in there. Number 11, Simone, is barely managing to keep her head above water. For me, when it comes to anything to do with water, it's just so terrifying. You feel like you cannot move, you can't breathe, literally paralyzes you from the inside out. Calm down, you're drowning each other! If you quit, you go to the side right here. Number 11! Unable to continue, Simone is the first to go to the safety of the tank's edge. Don't let the panic set in. Get in there. Number 14, Rugby Sevens Olympian Elia Green is slipping below the waterline. Being claustrophobic, the confined space scares me. But I'm definitely most afraid of water. Move, keep moving, get up here. I panic every time. Number 14, let's go. Sinking fast, Diastotti drags number 14, Elia, to the tank's edge. One by one, four more recruits take refuge from the beehive. All of you, come out here including number 17, Michael, unable to cope with the task and a debilitating shoulder injury. Right, you lot, come with me, move! As the first recruits to give in to panic, and punishes them with a bee sting. Lie on your backs, feet above the ground! While the others remain struggling in the beehive. You can't fucking do it! Get the fuck out! Stop pretending you can! Get in tight! Get in tight! Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go! Six inches above the ground! You're gonna wish you're back in that fucking tank! 
Number 11. I can't do it. You fucking can do it, and you will do it, because there is no way out. My track record would suggest that I do not do well with pain. I am, like, I'm scared of hurting myself. This is not fucking quit exercise. Get your fucking feet six inches above the ground. There's suffering in there. And guess what we're going to do out here? Exactly the same. As the beasting continues... Keep going. Come on. Come here, come here. Come here. The remaining recruits in the tank have been battling panic and exhaustion for an excruciating 10 minutes. OK, everybody to the side. Everybody to the side. Go, 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 go. When you get to the side, get out and join the team. As DS Clint gives them a much-needed break. Get up, get up, get up! Let's go, let's go, let's go! Towards me! Yeah. Fucking move! You lot, you can stand out for a minute. This is what you get when you stay calm. You don't panic. You get a bit of fucking rest. When I say go, this group, stand up. Form a line, a rank in front of that lot. Go! Move! Hurry up! Hurry up! Get used to being amongst each other. Get used to the panic and chaos, because that, that's all it is. It's self-induced panic and chaos. It's a bit of water. Yes, it's cold. Yes, it's tough. Yes, it fucking sucks. Get in there and get the job done. Right, compose yourselves. You're now going to have a second exposure. On your Bergens. Let's move! On your Bergens. Let's go, move! It's day two of selection, and the recruits have endured a sickening test of self-control, treading water and fighting panic. All right, so that was treading water 101. OK, you've had that experience. Now we'll crank it up to the next notch, OK? So duty recruit, please pass out the mass. Here, you guys can pass them out to each other, OK? Get them, get them going. And then once you're in, you're going to fill the mask up with water and then reseal. Water takes away sight, and if they lean back, it fills up their sinuses with water, which will stress them out more so. Pick up your mask. Go ahead and put them on. Put your mask on. You'll be fine. Come on. Don't let fucking water make you want to quit. But as the task intensifies, number 14, Elia, panics. Look at me, look at me, look at me. No, no, look at me, no, look at me. You get in that water and you get straight to the water's edge and you get out and you commit every single time. This is not your strength, but guess what? You commit to it anyway. You jump into the water, you do what you can. Your strengths will fucking prevail. I'm near the top of this group at the moment. None of that. Get a grip of yourself, look at me. Okay? No. It's good. Psychologically, this is where the test is. We will strip away everything. Then we will see if you've got the psychological resilience to get through each and every day. It's going to make you stronger, do you know that? Stick with it. The fear of the unknown, the fear of suffering, the fear of not being good enough. How are you going to cope with that? Go. Go. Right to the go. 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 I've always been very determined in my career and my sport. There were definitely times where I thought that um, this is this is too much. It's too hard. But I did it. All right, listen up here. Everybody look up here. Fill up your masks and then reseal. Do it. Fill the mask up with water. I do not want to see a level line. You know, this is all about growth and discovering my true self. And I'm willing to go to places that scare the shit out of me to find that out. While Elia recommits to the task. Breathe out of your mouth. 
Other recruits gasp for air as water-filled masks block their vision and ability to breathe. Get in the middle. Breathe through your mouth. Show us that you've learned something. Get in tight. Remain calm. We will expose all of your weaknesses on this course for you to embrace. In the middle. Let's fucking go, go. After another excruciating five minutes in the tank, number 17 can go no further. His shoulder injury is too much to bear. 17, get out and come with me. On selection, we have injuries all the time. You will keep going till you can't go anymore. That decision isn't yours. It's ours. Unable to continue and in intense pain, Chief Medic Dr. Dan needs to assess number 17. So you, you've thrown that peck before and it feels like you've done that again. It's just that right, that's a lot worse this time, I think. It's yeah. right through. Mm. So it goes down my back, into my neck, down mm. my lower back. Yeah. Oh. What do you reckon you can... Where do you feel it most? Yeah, underneath here. Oh. That's giving you grief, oh. isn't it? All right. It's just pins and needles in my whole... down my whole arm. OK. It's in my back, shoots through my back and into my neck as well. Since yesterday, it's just been getting worse and worse. This is not going to get any better on this course, I think. You know that already. And if it's at this stage on day two of the course, I can see that you're highly motivated. I don't want to give motivated. I'm a fighter. I know that. It's an impossible choice. I've given my whole life to boxing. Eating, sleeping, it's become an addiction to me. And that's what it takes to be number one. No worries. I'll give my number in. Thanks, Dan. Succumbing to his injury, pro boxer Michael is forced to medically withdraw from the course. Stuff. You dumb. Sorry, stuff. When do you think you tore it? Uh, I was on the first day. You tore it on the first day. Guard for you. I'm guarded for you because I know you would have gone I far on this. Give up. But listen, you've got nothing to prove. All you need to do is get healed now. Sort yourself out. Get back on track. Make sure that is done properly, OK? Um, you've got an amazing career in front of you. Do you know what I mean? You're an amazing fighter. I appreciate it. And Thank um, you, listen, the time will come again. Thank you again, Star. Pleasure, brother. Thank, Thank you so much. Much love, brother. Thank you so much. Having a quit because of an injury is the worst feeling in the world. I'm super sad. I'm, I'm holding back tears. I didn't want to go out this way, you know. Yeah, even Ant said oh, he was looking forward to seeing me at the end. Fingers crossed I come back and, and, and give it another crack. Next. I think I'm out of my depths. Elia's tragic past revealed. He had my mum in a choke hold and he was going to hit her with a brick. I said, hit me, do it, just do it. Oh no. Oh no. How the fuck's that happen? That's how you treat your bed, mate. Take Mike's. Fucking fuck. Is that king? Was that fuck again? I can't ever laugh when the I've got to stop sitting on fucking the side of the bed. Why, why isn't yours collapsing? You're the same weight as me. Uh, are you flopping on it? No, no it's I when they get up. <laughs> I didn't flop. I feel like fucking nutty professor. <laughs> I hope, I hope Mick doesn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> he's lost his blanket, he's lost his bed. Can someone go and get number 14? 14. 14. Oh, God. Having panicked during the previous task, the DS have questions for number 14, Elia Green. What's wrong? What 
think I'm out of my depths. I think it's obvious you're pretty hard on yourself, right? <laughs> so used to playing to our strengths, aren't we? And boom, weakness comes along. Talk me through that, what was going through your head? Like, that was, like, like impossible in my mind. You've fucking done it. Number 14, you've done it. I've told you to go back in the water, you went back in the water. You've done it. How is it impossible if you don't try? How is it impossible if you don't commit? I want to do it because I don't want to let you down and I don't want to let the team down. I don't want to let myself down. Where does that come from? Probably my mum. My mum always raised me like, if you're going to do something, do it. Don't think about how sad things are, how hard things are. If you have something to get done, you've got to do it. Talk to me about your mum then. So during my like time growing up, she. Um, Where did you grow up first of all? I was Australian. born in Fiji. Fiji. And then nice. um, I was adopted, moved over to Australia. Um, hit the jackpot. The most beautiful, loving parents. And then, yeah, it all kind of turned around. I, my father passed away. My mum was just grieving for ages. My brother and I would just watch her cry and cry and cry all the time. Yeah. And then she fell into a violent relationship. But that was tough. Would you witness it? I was every week, all the time, yeah. I think I was around six years old when, um, when the abuse started to happen. There was one situation where he had my mum in a chokehold and he was going to hit it with a brick. I was holding my mum's head and I said, hit me, like, hit me, do it, just do it. And he wouldn't do it. And what happened with that relationship? Um, we ran away. I was finishing year seven when my mum decided we had to leave. You know, it was all very secretive. I had no idea what was going on at the time. All I knew is that we were running scared. But I, I knew that it was going to be a different life. Um, yeah, but that's where I decided to take up rugby. I found my perfect sport because I could unleash my anger. Every time I carry the ball, I literally just think of, like, things, everything that's hurt me. Be careful with that, because that can veer off very quickly into a negative spiral. That makes sense. I understand. In 2018, it was the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games, and, like, my worst dream um, was coming to life. My mum had been diagnosed with lung cancer. I'd never been more scared in my life since losing my mum. Mum always just gave me so much reassurance that I was this great, fit, strong, and clever person that when I lost her, I just lost all of that. And every time you face your fear, you take a layer off of it, right? The more layers you take off, the more you start to understand about that emotion as you're getting closer and closer to the inside of it. OK? OK. And that's what it's I about. Yeah. It's about exposing your fears and repeating the process. So all I want you to do is commit to it. Commit to yourself. Commit to your fears. Commit to your weaknesses. Because they are going to pop up. High hopes for you. Chill out a little bit. OK? On yourself. That makes sense? Yes, yeah, stuff. Yes. God. Tough one. This course is going to take me to places where I have never been. My body to lengths that I have never been in. 
and mentally it's going to challenge me massively. So to actually get, make it through to the end and overcover all of those fears, doubts and negative thoughts would be a massive accomplishment.